All right, well that's where we're going, boys. Up there. All right, nice old place for a wander. Chipped off the castle for the minute because uh, still got a good couple of hours sunlight left and so I'd want to be up there just for sundown. So probably going to take one of the mountain paths and disappear off up there somewhere. We'll see. No plans as yet. fell off lucky son of a bitch hi hey guys welcome to another episode of bushcraft and fishing with a pikey we come all the way up here today to uh, show you a bag but, uh, far too windy up here to be doing any uh, reviews as such No, I just tried that clicking my finger shit and it don't work. I'm gonna have to walk, boys. Fuck. Oh my goodness. And, uh, yeah, missing quite the uh, quite the uh, red sky out there as well. So I need to crack on. Just giving her. Yeah. Look at that. The wind has completely died off now. Not even a breeze. And I just missed the sunset as well. Oh, sorry guys, we missed sunset. I've done my best to jog up round here and get here for you, but uh, it's taken me an hour. Where was we? By that tree. It's taken me an hour to jog round the uh, round the valley and get down there and up here. So uh, sorry about that. Oh, yeah, I'm going to see if there's uh, 
somewhere I can uh, show you this. Right, well here's the new bag anyway, it's too bloody dark to show you now I'm up here. Crap camera. But uh, yeah, I think it's the M60 or the M90, <clears throat> something like that. Uh, I forget, I think it's the M90 had the extra bit of web in there to take a helmet. Um, so it was straps. No, you can't see shit so I'm going home. It's a couple of days later, the weather has been absolute shite here, so uh, yeah, part two, take two, but uh, yeah, weather's been shit here the last week or so, uh, I've not been able to get out, do anything, well I could, just don't, don't fancy getting wet, you know what I mean, I know I'm not made of sugar, but I just don't, just don't fancy getting wet, walking around being cold and damp and all that sort of thing, so. So uh, yeah, we're going to be heading off out up into the forest here, hopefully. Um, spotted a few uh, green lanes that I want to go and have a look at. Um, to be honest, that's a pretty good way to find uh, decent places to camp in your local area. Um, just look on YouTube videos, uh, you know, like motocross green laning. You know, if you live in Birmingham, whatever, type in green lane in Birmingham. Um, and something will pop up and you'll find little areas of woodland and that that you didn't know was around um, most of these guys have GoPros and that attached to bikes and Jeeps and whatnot Land Rovers <laughs> uh, and there's some good videos out there but yeah you can find some decent places in your local area um, and maybe even areas you didn't know that you could go because um, you have to open the gate and it doesn't look like public access but uh, yeah out of breath because I've done a couple of miles already, like 20, you know. <laughs> no, I've only done a couple of miles. Uh, I'm going to check these green lanes out, see if they're any good. Because it looks like there's some pretty good camping spots. Um, just sort of doing a recce for later on. Obviously, still testing the bag out. Doing really well. I've used it loads of times since I was doing that last bit of footage there. Back and forwards to town. A little bit of fishing, stuff like that. I do quite a lot of better like outdoor stuff. I don't record at all because I can get a bit stressful. Um, what a little time I do get to myself to uh, make videos. The weather's always shit, so it's just always that added stress, you know. It takes the enjoyment out of it. But yeah, lovely scenery around here. Plenty of woodland and stuff. Take your pick, innit? Get away from people. Um, yeah, hopefully I'm probably going to run into the same problem as we did last time because the time is... Hang on. don't know if you can see that. It's just gone. Just gone 7 o'clock. So, uh, by the time I get up and round and up through all this, like, it's going to be dark and you're not going to be able to see what I'm fucking doing again anyway. But... Um, it's just another part towards the doing a review on the bag and you still haven't fucking seen it and I'm still going on about it it's not great by any means but no um, it's something I was sort of working out earlier because I've, I've got loads of stuff I'm not doing an overnighter I've just got all the stuff to be able to do an overnighter just seeing what I can carry in it how well it carries it um, everything I'd need for an overnighter pretty much not my usual setup, just tarps and pots and pans and this and that. Oh, I'll show you my new, uh, my new Stanley kettle that I got. Uh, that's pretty cool. If the light's all right, anyway, it might be a fucking day three thing coming on here. Um, yeah, show you a few bits, what I've got in my bag, what I can carry, which is pretty much the same stuff as I usually carry in my Bergen. Um, but with my Bergen, I put everything inside the bag, you know. <coughs> 
sleeping bags, roll mats, tarps and everything goes inside the bag. Uh, which I generally use for being out on the woodland because you ain't got bits hanging off to get caught and stuff, you know. But uh, no, this is a pretty old school classic look. Um, I think it's like the Belgium M60 or M40 bag, something like that. I'll know what it is by the time I upload this and all that anyway. Um, or I hope I do anyway. But yeah, it's something like the M60 bag. Um, and they're only nine pounds something like that through delivery brand new you can get them brand new for like a tanner um it's comfy so far obviously we've only got like webbing straps but being used to carrying the uh, british army bag and i don't mind something digging in my shoulders you know uh it is a little bit tight i'm sort of like maxed out on the straps um i've got a 44 inch chest and um, it could be a little bit looser, but I've got a big bit of foam stuck down the back. Uh, but again, I'll show you that if it's light enough by the time I get somewhere decent to stock and make a brew. But yeah, we will be having a brew. I'm rambling on. It's just nice to be out again. But we'll bring you back in a minute anyway. Bring you back. Halfway up Pennybrin now. Can't really see how steep it is, but it's one of them where you're putting your hands on your knees and really giving a slow and steady, though, eh? Uh, much of a view behind me at the minute? No, not really. Not really. A few, a few mountains and whatnot. But yeah, hardly the weather for a fucking wall cap on my head. But uh, soak it in kind of the lemon oils and the stuff like that and it generally keeps the mozzies off your head just a little something to put on your head soak it up with some mozzie spray that sort of thing just keeps them out your face anything like that the better get a lot of that in Wales a lot of standing water around some mozzies are a fucker all right <sighs> leave me here to sweat like a beast and I'll bring you back further at the top Well, if you could just step into my office. All right. This is where we started filming the other the other night when it was windy, and we walked all the way back down along there, along there, doo -doo 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 -doo, up over. We went to do a bit of filming there, but it was too dark by the time we got up there. Then do, do 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 down there, along there, and then we started back off again just down here, and we've come round the back of this forest, round the valley, down there, up this path, and up here. Um, I'm actually going back that way, down that way. The road's split in uh, two, and we're going to be heading off up into the forest up here. Um, the road does actually go on a lot further up there. I wanted to go that way, but um, I think we've only got a hour or two sun left up here before, uh, you know, we're gonna be struggling to see in the woods. So I'm gonna be heading back off down that way and out through the woods. And then we're gonna go round and down. It's gonna be dark by the time we get back down here again, cause that's, oh, that's a good 10 mile, I suppose. Right, I better get cracking, long way to go. Yeah, some lovely old uh, logging trails through these woods that you can't see from Google Earth because there's not really enough split in the woods to see where trails go. But, uh, oh, it's a big old forest. I think I'm about halfway up. This is where the logging trail comes. And the only sign of any people up here for a long time is there. And that looks like a Michelin off-road rear tyre. So someone's been up here on a bike recent. But, uh, yeah, it's a big old wood. We're going that way. Oh, this is nice. It's nice when it's all a bit new to you, isn't it? Not doing the same old treks every time. Good place for an ambush, though. 
skinwalkers jumping out on you and such. Still always keeping an eye out for uh, big cats and any evidence of them, like, you know, scratching on trees and whatnot. Any UK Bigfoot, you know, Sasquatches, whatnot. Bump into anything up in these mountains. Freaking telling you. Well, it seems like a nice enough space to uh, stop for a brew. So, uh, right, yeah, the bag. <laughs> it's light enough to see. Yay. Right. I'll say, I think I'll have to double check. I think it's the Belgian M60 waterproof bag. Um, and what we've got on the top is plenty of room for roll mats, sleeping bags, whatever. Um, I've actually got mine inside. Uh, I've got my roll mat on the bottom, and as you can see, you've got plenty of cord there. Um, I've tried carrying my Czech army sleeping bag as well, plenty of room for that. Um, I've had my tent on there, uh, my sleep, other sleeping bag on the top, so any combo it fits, because these straps are so so long that you can practically get anything in it, and you know, that's, that's six inches, so it can easily take something cake. 10 inches probably the big army sleeping bags as you can see you've got lovely good such strong straps um, metal buckles um, round the back it's a bit sweaty though because <laughs> I've had it on my back while I've been jogging up um, you see you've got some uh, get my selfie stick out some pretty nice thick strong web in there obviously that's, that's not going to break um, but as I say I am on me pretty much the minimum maximum adjustment there um, but reason being is again because in here it's you know you can put your plates or whatever in there but I've actually got a bit of foam off the uh, dining room chair stuck in there so <clears throat> there's a good two inches of foam that I've got in there so the straps would obviously go a little bit more if you didn't have that wedged in there, but that just seems to make it really nice and comfortable. Um, this is actually a really short back. Um, this actually just sort of sits like quite quite well above your waist, which is good for me because I like to carry a lot of shit on my belt around the sides and around the back and that. And uh, your ordinary Bergens will try and wrap around all that, so this is good because it sits above all that because uh, obviously it being army you're going to have your webbing on and your bottles and all that around your around your waist there so it sits above all that um right i'll i'll get this open because i need two hands and then i'll show you what i've managed to get in there well, as i say i'm actually carrying the same amount of stuff as i would in my normal bergen but uh, let me just show you this <sighs> I can hold that up with one finger. You can't do that with me, Bergen. Arms, arms length held out on a finger, so it's a pretty light old setup. And yeah, I've got a 2B3 uh, army basher tarp, my small axe, as you can see. It's only a dinky little axe, but she's a reconditioned one that I've done myself. Right on the top, I've got me cheapy old saw. Got me friggin' noodles. Um, I've got me, uh, me, me little coat. Um, but basically, I've just bought stuff that I don't fucking need just to put some weight in there. Uh, I bought rope that I don't need. I bought, oh, hang on a minute, let me just fucking undo all this. I put these, uh, the power cord there just to be able to cinch it all down. That don't come with it. Got my torch, you seen that? Got a big thick woolen jumper. Got my map. And my gloves. Got my cook kit. 
and I've got my little Aldi sleeping bag. And uh, I don't know what season it's rated, one maybe, half a season. But I got that in Aldi and it was all unfolded and all out of the packet. It was the last one left. I think it was four pound. So nice, nice little coffin shape, whatever they call a mummy sleeping bag for four quid. Can't beat that. Um, and yeah, that's all I've got in it. So yeah, I've got my cooking kit, uh, sleeping bag, tarp, bed roll, uh, wool jumper, waterproof coat, saw, my axe. And I've got all my knife and EDC stuff around my belt as well. So uh, yeah, for a little 10 pound bag, um, I was a bit dubious about what this was made of, first of all, I thought, oh, that, you know, but I've already given it a bit of a hammering, and uh, there's no seams going or anything like that. Um, but yeah, nice waterproof, small, I think it's down as a 40 litre, but I can get the same stuff that I get in 120 litre Bergen, but that's because... Like I say, the sleeping mat and the tarps on the outside of the bag. But as you saw, I can carry it on one finger. <laughs> so yeah, it's a lovely little setup. All right, I'll uh, get this out because I'm going gonna, gonna to need to get a brew going, and I'll talk you over that in a sec. Oh, I've got my stove out, so I forgot to show you my uh, me side pockets. What I will say is, when you, if you get one of these bags, um, they've been in storage for like 40 years. So, like the one and only metal component on there. Um, they were really tight so I didn't just want to grab that and fucking yank it so uh, when I first got it out of the bag I just got it and I just twisted these a little bit just to sort of free up the uh, poppers because like I say they've been in storage for donkey's years I think we've got some Land Rovers or whatnot coming this way sounds like somebody's just given a nah it must be on the main road far too fast for off-road um, but uh, yeah I'll just put a little dollop of oil on them just so uh, it don't rip the bag open you know what I mean so yeah side pockets I take these easy and in my other pocket that's just all me oh, I've got me me cheat me me pipe and all me uh, ropes and whatnot for me tarp but yeah this is me new uh, little cooking system that I treated myself to uh, this is the Stanley hook set. Um, I got that on eBay for like 12 quid. Um, comes with a lid on it. Nice little lid as well, you know, the little thing stands up, which you don't usually get, usually fucking around trying to get hold of that. But yeah, you've got the draining holes, small one, big ones. And inside you get a couple of cups. Coffee and the sugar don't come with it, you've got to rob that yourself. But yeah, you get a couple of cups in there, and uh, you know they're they're a good size mug. Um, so yeah, made up with that for twelve quid, and also got this thing here, uh, which I got from uh, fucking Own Bargains or something like that. I think it was Own Bargains, and that's one ninety nine. And this is really, really quite thick steel. I don't know if I can. No, you can't really get a gauge. It's not that thick because the top's rolled over. But it's, you know, you can't fucking squeeze it. That's nice and thick and sturdy. But weighs fuck all. And obviously it perfect for me, uh, me new pot to sit in there. A couple of 10 pegs. And the uh, trangia at the bottom. But obviously this will work as, you know, putting, putting sticks in as a little firebox or anything like that. Um, but yeah, for two quid and some tent pegs uh, certainly made handy use of that right I'll get this lit and uh, get some water boiling because I'm a bit thirsty now that's why we do it boys no other fucker about nice cows behind me few of them uh, woolly things well uh, yeah just seen a sign down here that's moaning about off-roading and that but 
saying, you know, you're going to have your bike taken off you, this and that. This is a green lane. It's marked on the map as a green lane with diamonds and green dots. So that means if the vehicle will go up it, you can fucking go up it. So as long as your vehicle's taxed, insured, MOT'd and you've got a license to ride the fucking thing, there's no pinching bikes off you. Because this is, well it says here, what, no riding on common ground and stuff like that. Fuck off. Fuck off. If the vehicle's taxed, insured and MOT'd and you're on public access ground, as fuck off, you know what I mean? I think what they're trying to get out of there is it's not just buy a dirt bike and come up here and rag it around. But, uh, yeah, you get a lot, a lot of people up here all riding dirt bikes, all road registered and that. And uh, I'll be getting one soon. Um, I fan fancy another motocross bike again. Can't ride mine up here. <laughs> you know, I'm after a 250. I've got a 1200. So I uh, can't be riding my uh, supermoto up here. Stand that way so you've got a bit of a view in it, you know what I mean? But uh, yeah, if anyone wants to chuck me a fucking Land Rover or a motocross bike, help me make videos, wouldn't it? You know what I mean? Just give it a shout and I'll open up a Patreon and you can pile some money in and I can buy a motocross bike and a Land Rover. Wouldn't that be nice, eh? <laughs> Shame things don't work like that. But uh, yeah, kettle's on. Where is she? Where is she? There she is. Happy dudes. Um, shouldn't take long at all as you can see, sun's starting to go down, well, it's just on the horizon now, so I'm going to be going up this track here, along the top on the main road where you've just heard the jeeps and that, and then down the main, where are we, fucking hell, I'm not getting used to this, <laughs> and then we're coming down the fucking hill there. That's all back to front, that's mad as fuck. And then down there, but yeah, about, about 10 odd miles anyway. All right, let me get me brew on. I'll stop chatting shit. Happy days. All right, this is where we've been coming through the woods. And as you can see, green diamonds and green dots, which means public fucking highway. And you can tell how steep it is here by how close the lines are together. And we started at 115 feet. Sorry, I've got my pipe in my mouth. Started off at 115 feet down at the base there when we were walking around. And we are now sat at 400. This is where we're based at, just by the antennas. So, uh, yeah, as you can see, this is this is a public highway. As it carries on. Down there, and down there, and down there. And again, this is a public highway. You can drive vehicles, motorbikes and all that. So yeah, anywhere where you've got this all sort of shit on a map, help yourself, help yourself in it. But uh, yeah, we're currently at 400 feet. Nice. Alright, this is the fun bit though. Right. We're not at a total boil, but I don't want a total boil because I ain't putting milk in and I don't want to stand there for 20 minutes blowing on it. Alright, for this, because obviously these pegs, as I found out before, are going to be rather hot. Kind of had an idea that they might be, but I thought, oh, you know, I'll just fucking pull them out. But now, these things come with a hook. Drag the bastards out like that. Saves you getting lines on your fingers. And then the tricky bit is getting that on that bastard like that. <laughs> Jobs are good. And I'll give that 10 minutes or so to cool down before we start packing it all together. But uh, yeah, fucking cracking a little bit of kit there. So I like it. I'm not going to be using it every time. You know, as and, as and fucking when. Sean, hey, got Sean with us. <laughs> oh, I spilled it down the side. That means I'm gonna have a sticky fucking cup. 
yeah baby so uh, yeah that's a brew with a view oh hang on it's not that's a brew with a view and you'll probably see that on instagram <laughs> Oh, while I think of it though, I don't want to take full credit for this um, because the first person I see using like the kitchen utensils or it might have been one from the bathroom to put the old bog rolls in but it was Paul Prep Nomad, he was the first one I see using one of these but I believe it was a gift from Whole Bush Crafter so I think it was Whole, Whole Bush Crafter that I see on YouTube first onto these things so uh, yeah nice one lads and uh, anyone go and check out their channel because they're a couple of great lads as well know their shit get out make really good vids and that's a uh, whole bush crafter and prepped nomad check them out they've got some good videos about nice local lads over in over in yorkshire over in yorkshire so uh, yeah brew with a view A quick bit of history while I think about it. <clears throat> These here are the start of the Berwyn Mountains. And this mountain range stretches along that way. And beyond that, oh, it's focusing on my finger now, is Snowdon over that way. A couple more miles. Hang on, there's me zoom. There it is. Um, and there's actually a UFO incident which happened in these mountains back in the 70s, I believe. Um, and if you go on YouTube and look up the Berwyn UFO incident, I think it is. Berwyn Mountains UFO. And there's actually quite a lot on there. And uh, what it was, was, back in the 70s, I'm sure it was the 70s, there was a big fucking ball of light seen flying around the tops of these mountains. And someone then see it sort of pause and stop over here. And it was in the, on the news and in the papers and all that sort of thing. But on the actual day that it happened, <clears throat> within, I think, well, oh, just off the top of my head, I think it was something like an hour or so later, the army turn up in tanks, armoured vehicles and all that sort of thing. Now, there ain't no army barracks around here. We're, we're out in the middle of fucking back of beyond. Um, and it's going to take the army longer than an hour to get out here with, you know, on t tracked vehicles, tanks and such. So what that means really in my eyes was the army was already here. If I, it only took an hour for the army to get up onto this mountain, I mean, it's taken me an hour to get from down there to up here. Where was I? I started off down here by the car and we come up and round and fucking up there and up this path here and that taken me in just over an hour now it took the army the same amount of time to get there with tanks and track vehicles so basically they were in the area waiting for that to happen but uh yeah it's a pretty interesting story um there's quite a few vids on the berwin mountain ufo incident and uh yeah it's quite an interesting read but it's it's Sort of not as well known as like the Rendlesham Forest, or well, it might be the Rendlesham Forest incident. But uh, yeah, that's the very own Welsh fucking uh, Roswell. Yeah, history, bitch. All right, boys. Better knock this on the old head then. I didn't have. <laughs> Hello, mate. Mint sauce. Mint sauce. How are you doing? How are you doing? Come here. Got some grass on your lips. Got some grass on your lips. Yeah, you have. You've got grass on your lips. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, as I was fucking saying, before I got rudely interrupted by a fucking sheep. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Basically, all I wanted to do was finish off the video showing you my bag and whatnot. Which again, I think's brilliant for nine quid. Um, I've got no beef with it as yet. Hang on, can you see? See me a bit better that way. As I say, the old camera don't record in the dark. Um, yeah, great bag for a tenner. Um, 
cook kit, 15 quid including the, the fucking kitchen utensil fucking holder for your sink, <laughs> 15 quid for that, 4 quid for a sleeping bag, £7 for a tarp, so you don't need all the expensive bullshit to just get out there and have a bit of fun, do you? Eh? But, uh, yeah, it's going to be dark soon, you ain't going to be able to see me, so. Remember guys, finger fudge the old like button there, tickle the old bell end, get notifications of any new vids coming out, new movie, eh? Don't want to miss them. Ooh, that's a big fucker, that. It's a big fucker, that one. Um, yeah, get notifications, any new movies coming out. Not many coming out because the weather's just been shite. Um, but yeah, as I say, don't forget to finger fudge the old like button because uh, it really does help with the old uh, YouTube algorithm. You all like watching uh, hiking videos and camping and bushcraft and all that. So by leaving a comment, a thumbs up or a thumbs down, um, certainly helps promote these videos. Same with anyone else, I always do. Um, I generally watch videos all the way through. I'm not just going to go, oh, put it on for two minutes, switch it off, you know what I mean? I watch it all the way through. Leave a comment, usually a nice comment. I, I, I don't think I've left a horrible comment before. <laughs> Maybe some advice sometimes. Sometimes people don't like advice. Um, but yeah, it does the uh, algorithm world good. Gets more videos out there. Always shut the gate, boys. Always shut the gate. Uh, helps get people's videos out there, and then that way there'll be more popping up in your recommended. You'll be able to find new people out there, new things. I mean, I've been watching YouTube for, well, since 2006, something like that, 2008. I've only been had my channel go nearly a year now. And uh, I'm still finding new people all the time, so, uh, you know, by giving thumbs up and that's going to come up in your, uh, up in your search thing, more of that sort of thing. Why wouldn't you? But as I say, oh, another four or five miles to do. It's going to be getting dark, going to need my headlamp on. But uh, yeah, I think fudge that fucking like button, boys. <laughs> but until next time, guys, keep it pikey. Looks like it might be a nice night for meteorites. I think I'll hang around for a little bit longer.